Okay, so it's good for you to know, and that's where your antifungal therapy is going to be against. Blastomyces, and you can see dermatitis. So this means there's something to do with the skin. Coccidioides imitis, histoplasma capsulatum. So these are the three important systemic fungal infections. And uh, this is what I was trying to tell you. And you can see over here, these are saprobic phases that can exist at room temperature, maybe 25 degrees C. And you can see histoplasma on the top, blastomyces, and uh, paracoxidioides, and others. So you can see the form that they exist in nature. So they are there in vegetation, uh, in bird droppings, in zoo, for example, in farms, in many other places. So you'll see kind of typical mold, a multicellular. But once they go into our system and cause infection, they are parasitic. They have to be small. Cell, yeast-like. And you can see over here the form, the yeast form of these diamorphic fungi. That's what we say, diamorphic, because they exist in one form at one temperature and another form in at other temperature. As far as uh, epidemiology is concerned, you can see that the eastern part of U.S., we have a very high incidence of blastomyces and histoplasma. So you can see very high incidence in this part. And actually that includes um, till Midwest. Like I would say like ha half of, mm, yeah, ha half of Iowa, I would say, like Midwest, about Midwest. So all these area east of that, it's a very high incidence of both uh, blastomyces, histoplasma, and capsulatum. But then again, uh, lower, upper Mexico, and then all those states, Texas, California, Arizona, we have coccidioides imitis also present. So these are the two, one of the commonest, and then there's a list of others. They are in South America, some part of uh, West Africa, and uh, part of Bangladesh, I would say Malaysia, and other Far East countries. We have other kind of systemic uh, fungal infection. But obviously, uh, this is what you would see in this country. Uh, blastomyces, paracoxioides, and sometimes over here, coxioides imitis, very common. Now, <coughs> another thing I want you to understand is, again, <coughs> this is a pathogenesis for all of them. So keep these in mind. It will be easier for you to kind of dissect out uh, the basic concept. The basic concept again is that uh, this is the natural habitat means saprobic free living. This is typically a mycelial phase temperature and reproduction is through uh, spore formation, sporulation, that's what we see. Right? And then there's the spores. And these spores, once released in environment, are taken up by animals, including us. And then again, they are parasitic Yeast, temperature is a little bit high, and now reproduction takes place through budding or endospores. So this is a cycle where the, we call a typical fungal cycle for almost all diamorphic fungi. So they can exist in two forms. Okay, again, forget that. It's a little bit con confusing, but I'll just tell you an idea. Uh, that we usually, when we look for these uh, infections, we usually do their sputum culture or sputum examination. We also do their blood and cerebrospinal fluid. Pus vaginal secretion is very common for many of systemic uh, testing that we do. We look at the hair, skin, and nails, and we also look at tissue biopsies. So we can also look at tissue biopsies. So you basically see all these systemic fungi into deeper part of the tissues and we have all those tests available. Uh, obviously, this is beyond the scope of our, this, our course that uh, we would go in that detail, but just want you to have an overview that uh, systemic uh, fungal infections can have a tedious kind of a lab management and diagnosis. Again, a common slide for all the systemic uh, fungal infections that you typically see from soil containing uh, bird droppings. So it's kind of whipped by the wind and you are jogging, running, whatever you're doing. 
and you inhale micronidia. So you see micronidia of the fungal spore, it goes into your lungs, and then from lungs they're going to go to all different parts of your body. They can go into your liver, heart, brain, bone, intestine, kidney. So you can see a typical cycle of pathogenesis of these systemic fungal infections that they are released into air and then picked up by your lungs and the lungs take them to the different parts of the body. Okay, another example, you can see from here a person is like digging, so because they are there in saprobic form, in farms, in field, in soil. So if a gardener, a farm worker, or whosoever, so typically it's an aerosol, it's called aerosol orthospores. These are like orthospores, a little bit longer. And uh, if you are immunocompetent, you should be able to take care of that. If there's something wrong with your immunity, if you happen to be young, not developed immune system, or you're on drugs, and whatever this factor, that this factor we discussed, you're going to inhale it, and then the spores will be released within your body, and then they will go and deposit in meninges, bones, and even skin granuloma. So you'll see a typical skin granuloma in this person, and you can trace it back to the occupation of the person or exposure of the person uh, that caused the entry of this fungal infection into fungi into your system. As a rule, uh, since they are eukaryotic, biochemically similar to human hosts, it is difficult to develop chemotherapeutic agent that will destroy the pathogen and not harm the patient. That's the challenge that we have, that's the problem we have, and that's what we really want to come up with, with some a drug that would uh, demarcate that. Anyway, uh, this is a, a uh, table from your book, and I think um, I, I've, I've already posted the details of that, They're all in, in your book, but what I want you to remember in this one is, you know, don't just get confused with the amount of information in the table, but many a times these tables are made, so they take like the basic information from the text into a format that you can compare and contrast. And that's how you learn, basically. So in olden time, we used to do it ourselves. In new textbook, they have done it for us. So what you need to do over here is, as I said earlier, I just want you to concentrate at least on those systemic fungal infections they are prevalent in this country. We have talked about at least three. Forget even what's happened in Africa or India. What you need to do is the blastomycosis, very important. So these are one, two, three, four, five, six things and uh, till here. So there are four different types of systemic infections that you may get. But if you remember the basic concept of pathogenesis, the basic cycle, it would not be difficult for you to put everything in context. The only difference will be, one will be histoplasma and one will be uh, paracoxioides, all these things. But basically, they are going to cause the same pathogenesis depending upon which site of the body is involved. Now, let's go on the top, blastomycosis. Again, as far as etiology is concerned, etiology means causative agent. So the causative agent causes that disease, right? So many a time, like for example, we say mycosis. So mycosis is a disease. And mycology is the study of fungi. So many a time you see, for example, uh, coxidomycosis or coxido, coxidoides imitis. So these are the name of the fungi and the associated diseases, usually end with osis, and stuff like itis, things of that nature. So blastomyces, dermatitis, and typical uh, ecology means that where they are normally present. Who are the people who are going to get this infection? And like an ecosystem, that's what it is. So if you happen to be in an area where there's a decaying organic matter, so if there's a decaying or organic matter, usually in the farms and other areas, then the, you're looking for blastomycosis. And then again, geographical distribution from the same slide that's, that we mentioned about epidemiology present in North America, Ohio, and basically what they have found are Ohio and Missis Mississippi River valleys. They are the typical location of 
the presence of blastomyces. Other thing which is going to be common of all these things that uh, some of them have a very small yeast particle as compared to others which will have a larger yeast particle. All you need to know is the relative size of this yeast particle versus red blood cell, for example, or a white blood cell, this will give an idea whether it can be easily phagocytosed or not, number one. Number two is that if there are micronidia as compared to macronidia, the chances are you're going to inhale it and it's going to pass through circulation easily. Right? So you can see from here on the top, uh, this is a broad-based budding yeast. It's about like 8 to 15 micrometers in diameter. So it's a large particle. And if you remember, the biggest cell you have is neutrophil. So neutrophil is about 12 micrometers. It's going to be a challenge for the neutrophil to go for a particle of the same size as the neutrophil, neutrophil itself. So these are some of the pathogenic things that you can relate and, and keep in your mind. The clinical manifestation, obviously, most of the time, if they are inhaled, is a pulmonary manifestation. So pulmonary manifestation is going to be cough, you know, blood in the sputum, inflammation, or at the severe stage, pneumonia. That's a typical uh, pathophysiology that you'll get for these infections. And if there is an extra pulmonary inoculation, or extra pulmonary transmission, this means bones, liver, heart, kidneys. Why kidneys? Why kidney? Why liver? Because liver is going to metabolize. And why kidneys? Because anything which is in the blood has to be filtered in the kidneys. So that's another thing. Once they are being filtered, they're going to get deposited over there or cause problems. Okay. The second one again is uh, coxidoides emitters and uh, it's going to be coxidomycosis. So anything, as I said earlier, blastomycosis, blastomyces cause blastomycosis. Coxidioides cause coxidioidomycosis. Anything that ends with mycosis, osis, all these are diseases as compared to fungi. Okay, ecology, soil and dust. Again, we talked about the prevalence, which part of the United States they are present. They again, you can see from here, they are usually uh, endospores. So endospores are a little bit smaller as compared to blastomyces. Blastomyces are like budding yeast. If they are budding, they have to be larger in size. As compared to spores, if they are not budding, they're going to be smaller in size. And you can see a typical is 2 to 4 micrometers. Again, as far as uh, disease process is concerned, it could be pulmonary or extra pulmonary. So, if you come across a person who's got pneumonia, so you should always keep in mind that it could be uh, bacterial pneumonia, viral pneumonia, fungal pneumonia. So these are some of the differential diagnoses. Then you are going to ask the person what your profession is, where you're working somewhere, how it initiated. Many a times you can get all this information by history taking. All right. Now, again, it can progress and disseminate to all those organs that we already discussed and to make things worse. All these things will be worse in HIV patients. Remember, HIV patients, many a time, they are unable to mount a patent immune response to fungi. That's what the typical presentation is. Histoplasmosis, again caused by histoplasma, capsulatum. Uh, soil with high nitrogen content. Typical is bird or bat droppings. So that's another thing that you have to keep in mind. You know, person had a recent visit to countryside, farm side, or occupation, so and so forth. There is a high nitrogen, nitrogenous content. Uh, North America, Ohio, and Mississippi River. Like we talked about that. If you see again, they are yeast usually. And if, by the same rule, if they are budding, they are larger in size. And many of them, if they form spores, they are very small, two to four micrometer, easily inhaled. You would not even know, notice it. It's not like dust. You can see dust, and the dust is coming to your lungs, so you can do some uh, protection, but it's not going to be in the air. 
and you can easily inhale. Okay, and then again, you can see uh, they can also exist intracellular. That's a typical case for many of them anyway, because they are going to be phagocytosis, and then an immune response will be there to fight. And the problem with uh, especially histoplasmosis is that many a time, 90% of the time, persons are asymptomatic. And the reason is because our immune system is normal, we are normal, we really take care of that, and there is no response, immune response, or if there is, there is a low intensity exposure. Remember, uh, if the inoculum is small and your immune system is good, no problem. If inoculum, if inoculum is large and your immune system is normal, there is a challenge. If your inoculum is small and your immune system is compromised, again there is a challenge. So it actually weighs in, uh, depending upon what is the size of inoculum, what is the extent of exposure. So all these things basically play an important role in pathogenesis. Okay? All right. I think uh, I don't want you to go in detail for the rest of the stuff. So you can just concentrate on the first three because that's what we have in U.S unless you want to go back to Africa or India, practice over there. So you may want to know what's happening in that part and all the details. But pretty much the pathogenesis is going to be the same. Okay, I think this is what I've already discussed. Just a detail of whatever we talked about. So all these things in the subsequent slide are just a detail of whatever is there in the table. So if you pretty much know table, you will be able to, the only difference is that if you look at the slides, you would not be able to visually compare and contrast one form of systemic mycosis with the other. Okay? All right. Uh, again, uh, natural history of mold and yeast of blastomyces uh, dermatitis. Again, you can see from here, uh, they are there in the spore from and animals and human beings can inhale and can go into the system typical birding. Very basic, very easy uh, slide is there from your book. The only thing it tells you is that ecosystem, just keep in mind of the ecosystem, the size of the uh, spores, the exposure to animals and humans goes into the lungs via air and then divides into two forms and then comes back again back and forth. It's like a complete circle that these uh, fungi go through. We talked about clinical syndromes. Diagnosis again, if you remember the complicated slide, I want you to go in detail. All you need to know is that sputum, uh, x-rays, you know, the skin lesions, biopsies, cerebrospinal fluid, uh, vaginal secretion, all these things are important for diagnosis of these fungi. Treatment again depends upon uh, the level of your immune system. It may be very, very challenging if you have, and remember, all those systemic pulmonary infections are going to be a very challenging in terms of management if you have AIDS. You know, that's, that's basically, nobody dies with AIDS, people dies with opportunistic infections. As simple as that, because you basically kill CD4 T cells, so no adaptive immune response is initiated, and that was the commonest mode of death for immunocompromised patient is. Again, you can see from here, uh, that actually gives you the cycle of Coxiides imitus. Again, probably it's more of Arizona, I would say. Uh, you saw that upper belt of, uh, you know, upper part of uh, Mexico and lower Texas, Arizona, and San Diego, probably California. So you see typical presentation. Again, inhalation goes into the system, divides, spreads out, completes the cycle parasitic and sepro seprobic in the environment ecosystem and in the lungs. So you'll see a common theme that all of these are going to present as pulmonary infections and then may go into your system to give extra pulmonary diseases and almost every part of the body is going to be involved. Okay, uh, again, natural history for histoplasma capsulatum. Again, you can see in this way you have bird droppings, bats. These are another important thing, and you can see mycelia formation, very microconidia, very, very small. And then again, inhalation goes into your system, divides in your cells, and then 
comes back to the environment again, and that cycle is completed for these as well. So saprobic and parasitic phase. I think that's about it for today. Uh, <coughs> there's only one lecture left uh, for mycology, and that I'm going to do more opportunistic from that. And that actually happens to be one of the most important as well. I do have some of the handouts today, two lectures, actually was material from two lectures already posted on live text. I'll give you a separate handout as well for tomorrow. So it'll give you an overview of different forms of infection and uh, what are the positive or organisms and what are the clinical manifestations. What I would suggest to you is uh, if you really want to build up my quality in, uh, on, on like a building block with a basis, pathogenesis, talk about inactive response, I want you to go and also see the first chapter in general microbiology went through different between mold and yeast, you know, what is dimorphism, these are the commonest things. What is a inactive immune response to these kind of microorganisms? The only difference uh, in mycology is that there is an ecosystem involved in this one. It's more of an occupational. And then immune system is upfront in fungal infection. So this is something that whenever you get a disease, whenever you have a problem and you want to exclude all those possible risk factors, as we say in medicine, they say think fungus. They say think green, that's what they say, think fungus. Always think of fungi. If you are coming across any infection that is resistant to treatment and you're not finding uh, you know, the person responding to it. Right? Okay, any questions? Okay, so one more lecture to go for mycology and two lectures for parasitology. And then we'll be done. And uh, I think uh, I just want to share with you what my plan is for next week. I have put some review sessions and see how it works, but my, I'm basically going to utilize that time to review your assignments. You know that had possible problem. 